All right, some of you guys had doubts that I defeated the uh, M600 lockouts for host prompt communication in Marlin, and you guys said you wanted to see it printing, so here you go. Okay, we're going to do two test prints. The first one is going to be without Octoprint coming through the TFT, and we'll be testing the M600 operation through the TFT along with the filament runout through the TFT. Then we'll do the same thing through Octoprint where we test the filament runout sensor and also the M600 call for the filament color change. As the video progresses, I'll explain the details of my approach. For those of you not familiar with the project that I've been working on, this is a way to run M600 filament changes and retain use of the filament runout sensor on both the TFT for printing and through Octoprint. And the reason this is challenging is because the stock TFT is not Marlin mode capable. And Marlin is not natively enabled to be able to do this. The difference between touch mode, which is what you see in this video, and Marlin mode is that with touch mode, the TFT generates its own menus and sends commands to control Marlin over the serial port, and G-code is the only form of communication occurring. Whereas in Marlin mode, the LCD in which menu items are displayed is controlled by Marlin, and the LCD is equipped with an encoder that sends your menu selections to Marlin over dedicated wires that won't interrupt anything happening over the serial port. The wiring between the two modes is very different, as is the mode of communication between Marlin and the LCD or TFT. To sum it up, Marlin mode is a different type of hardware interface with different capabilities. Because this is an unconventional use of the hardware, the firmware in the TFT obviously was not ready to be able to handle this either. The TFT that I'm working with is an MKS TFT28 clone used by artillery in the Genius and Sidewinder. I have modified a branch of the Big Tree Tech compatible firmware that has been adapted by Blue Forcer. Now I have had to modify Marlin on the back end with about five lines of code. And we'll get more into what I changed and why in a minute. I've made some changes that allow the TFT firmware to know when Octoprint is running. When the TFT detects that Octoprint is actually printing, the status screen changes modes and silence all of the M114 and M105 calls. Actually, I don't even use M105 anymore. I have it sending out M155 for automatic temperature responses, just to cut down on that hassle a little bit. M105 is a command sent by the TFT to request the current temperatures from the printer. M105 commands are sent anywhere from every half second to every two seconds. That's why I started using M155, which is an alternative that you only have to send once and it has an extra parameter that you can use to define how often you want the printer to send temperatures back to the TFT. M114 is what pings the printer for the current XYZ positions. M105 was originally implemented in the firmware source code that I got from GitHub, I'm not sure why. I don't know if the original firmware for the TFT from Artillery was using M105 or M155. But now that the TFT knows when Octoprint is printing, it's able to mute any commands coming from the TFT unless you manually override a lockout. The reason that's important is because the MKS Genel board inside the Artillery Sidewinder and the Artillery Genius can't tell the difference between information coming in off the USB and information coming in from the TFT at the same time. So because they both end up on the same serial port, the signals can overlap and garble each other's commands. That means one has to take priority and the other one has to keep quiet. Now I haven't done the deep research to figure out whether or not all of that information comes in through the same serial port because of the board or because of something with Marlin and the way it handles inputs. But I did read from one source that it was a hardware issue on the board where the port being used by the TFT is physically the same input as the port for the USB that Octoprint hooks into. There has also been talk about Marlin supporting multiple serial inputs at the same time, either now or in the future. I have to do some research on that. But if that becomes possible, then I was thinking about moving the TFT to one of the other ports on the board. And hopefully that separates the two signals out and allows more easy implementation of Marlin mode signals. If that ends up working, there will be no need to move the filament runout sensor to the main board, which is the only hardware modification that you have to make to be able to use these M600 features in the first place. And the reason for this is because if you were to leave the filament runout sensor on the TFT when the filament did run out during an octoprint session, the TFT would have to force an interrupt of any incoming signals from octoprint, which could cause garbled G-code commands. The other thing you can do while octoprint is printing is that there is an emergency stop button that allows you to immediately bypass the queue and through the emergency parser send an M112 command to halt the printer in case you have to do that for some reason. Now, in case you're wondering, I am running Marlin 2.0.5.3. That 
there are a few things that are a little bit glitchy with Octoprint. For instance, if you don't reply to the dialogues that pop up in Octoprint telling you that the nozzle is parked or that you need to reheat before continuing the M600 procedure, Octoprint will assume that you have not made it to the next stage in the process and it will not show you the purge more and continue dialogue. Keep in mind that what you're watching here is actually the first successful print using this method. So I'm learning a lot as I make this video and there's going to be a lot of improvements over the next few weeks. Any suggestions about how to make this process go smoother and more streamlined, please let me know in the comments. I am also aware of and apologize for the terrible audio issues I'm having right now. Okay, let's dive into the changes I made in Marlin and then we'll talk about what I did in the TFT to handle the post prompt support. The first change I made was to enable an LCD controller in configuration.h. I chose RepRap Discount Smart Controller, but it really isn't that important because we aren't using an encoder or any of the LCD menus. My only consideration in this was avoiding pins that might conflict with something else that was already installed on the board. The reason to enable an LCD controller is that Marlin requires it in order to be able to activate the family of features that are required to run M600 and filament changes. Also in configuration.h, I enabled filament runout sensor. In my case, because I was moving the filament runout sensor from the TFT to the main board, I chose the X max position on the board, which turned out to be pin 2. So I went into pins underscore ramps dot H, and I changed the filament runout pin from 4 to 2. The correct location for your pin definition may change based on the board that you have. The last thing I had to enable in configuration.h was print job timer auto start. This will allow the TFT to activate the filament runout sensor in Marlin later on, which is disabled unless the print timer is running. Next, I went into configuration ADV.H and I enabled advanced pause feature, which activates our M600 command and requires filament runout sensor support. Then I enabled host action commands, host prompt support, and emergency parser, which will allow us to communicate with the TFT later. At this point, if we were running true Marlin mode, we would be all set. But in our case, we still have a problem. And it starts with the emergency parser. The reason we had to enable emergency parser was to force commands like M876 and M108 to the front of the queue to be able to respond to M600 dialogues, which we are not meant to be able to do without an LCD encoder. Somewhere on the back end of Marlin, a decision was made that when emergency parser was enabled, it would exclude those commands that we need to use from being sent via G code, specifically when the printer is in a busy state waiting for user, which is the state of the printer in the middle of an M600 command. I know it sounds strange that enabling the emergency parser would actually disable the emergency parsed commands, but what I've gathered from reading two-year-old forums is that the coders at Marlin did not want M600 being used haphazardly as a substitute for other pause commands. Now here's where we modify Marlin on the back end. First I created a parameter called emergency override in configuration ADV.h. Then I opened the Marlin source code in Visual Studio Code and searched the entire project for any occurrences of if disabled emergency parser. That was my way of finding anything that had been excluded when emergency parser was activated. I added an OR statement to every one of those lines that would still allow the code to be run if our new emergency override parameter was enabled. Now that Marlin is all set up, let's talk about how we can relate that to using it through the TFT. Which brings us to the topic of host prompt support and host action commands. These not only support the M600 and filament runout dialogues, but also trigger Marlin to echo host commands on the serial port. And those action command notifications are the way in which we are going to teach the TFT to respond to filament change and filament runout events. When I started this project, I only anticipated using one or two action commands, but by the time I got into it, I ended up using half a dozen or more. So I probably should have set up a more elegant parsing script. I got a new microphone, so let's see how this works. Okay, there's a few dialogues that we have to worry about and a few that we don't. Now, when you run an M600 or have a filament runout event, the first dialogue to come up tells you that the printer is paused. No response is necessary from that event, and you can basically ignore it. The next one to come up tells you that the nozzle is parked. At that point, it's waiting for a user response to decide when to start feeding the filament back in. Now, if you don't respond to that dialogue in time, Marlin will time out, go into a standby mode, and turn the heater off until you respond to the next dialogue. From what I can tell, both of these dialogues expect an M108 in response. But what I found was that using the M108 was kicking me out of the process. So I switched over to an M876S0, and that turned out to work well. M108 is meant to interrupt any process that is waiting to complete. It won't, however, interrupt the process that is waiting for user input. That is why we modified Marlin. 
and we run into the same problem with M876. M876 is something of a private command in Marlin. You will not find it in the documentation online. Octoprint does have some support for it, so there is some documentation that you can find there, and I'll link that in the description. It also gives a pretty good overview of how host prompt support works, and I kind of wish I would have found this resource in the beginning of the project instead of now while I'm recording this. Action command prompts are nothing more than Marlin sending text parameters for dialogue over the serial port. Responses are sent with an M876 command which has an S parameter that defines which of the selections the user has chosen, numbered starting from zero. For example, a dialog with two buttons would have two choices, M876S0 and M876S1, which is the case that we run into with the purge more and continue dialog with M600 support. In this case, S0 is purge more and S1 is continue. The syntax is very simple. Two forward slashes, the word action, a colon, and then one of four action choices. Prompt begin, which initiates a new dialog with the text to display to the user. Prompt choice, which has the text to display in the first button. If there is more than one button, there will be more than one prompt choice. Prompt choice can also be known as prompt button. The third command is prompt show, which tells Octoprint that the dialog is now fully defined and to prompt the user. The last command is prompt end, which designates that the dialog has been fulfilled. What I did to get the TFT to work with M600 is parse out the prompt choices that were unique to the dialogues that I was looking for and prompt the user accordingly. The last problem that I ran into was that the filament runout sensor was not working when I was printing from the TFT. It turns out that when you're running a filament runout sensor through Marlin, it doesn't start monitoring the sensor until the print timer has started, which is why we enabled print job timer auto start. What that does is allows the use of M75 to start the print timer and M77 to stop it. There for allowing us full functionality of the filament runout sensor even when printing through the TFT. So I took a very simple approach which works well for now, but I will probably improve that in the future. And that pretty much sums up how I did it. And if you have any ideas for future projects, let me know. I love challenges. Special thanks to the guys over at the Filament Forum for the endless hours of brainstorming and testing that they contributed. You should check out their forum. I'll link to it below. And keep your eye out for an article about this there soon.